Hey guys, how are you? Today I wanted to make a video on how you can get rid of your anxiety today. And this is going to be practical tips and tricks, not only the basic tips and tricks you'd hear from your family member that's never had anxiety, such as get over it, it's not that deep, or just calm down, breathe. Come on, we have who have had anxiety know that there's a lot more than just breathing and calming down. It's a whole thing in itself and we're gonna get into that today and we're gonna get into my tips and tricks on how to fight it and look sometimes it's gonna come either way but this is how we're gonna deal with it right moving forward so let's get into it so I have over here my little mint teacup with the little gooses super cute and I'm gonna be drinking it as we go a girl gets thirsty so anyway one thing I want to say when it comes to anxiety you can't make any shortcuts you can't take shortcuts when it comes to limiting caffeine you know eating healthy and all of those other things that we're gonna get into as well but it's not just those sh about uh, you know those implementing those why do I kind of like free sometimes it's not only about you know doing those things that everybody says to do there's more to it and we're gonna get into it we're gonna get into like why you actually have the anxiety right let's let's go get into it God, I really can't talk sometimes. Okay, so let's get into it, guys. So when you have anxiety, it's not something that over, that came about overnight. It's a whole entire habit that you developed of worrying. It's a whole cycle of intrusive thoughts that comes to you constantly because you started this habit of worrying. And so that's the good news. A habit can be broken. It's not ingrained in you. It's not something that won't be able to go away. It's definitely fixable. So it's definitely fixable, right? That's the good news. I'm sorry, I just got interrupted for a brief moment because someone walked in. All right, it's definitely fixable and that's the good thing. That means that it's not something that will stay with you forever. So that's one of the biggest fears that we anxiety sufferers have, especially when we're going through a very strong, very hard to deal with burst of anxiety. It's hard and we almost get this hopeless feeling like, oh my God, it might never go away. And we get really scared to live in a place like that. Let me explain what that feels like to maybe some of you guys who maybe haven't been through it. It feels like you're dying, going crazy, losing touch with reality. It's not a good feeling. So it's very scary and it's very helpful to surround yourself at that time with people who know what you're going through. And it's really, really helpful to understand what you're going through. So understanding that you're just going through anxiety is so key. When you are going through these things, but you know you don't know necessarily if you have anxiety or a health issue, that's bad. That's why it's so important to go to the doctor. Your doctor will tell you if it's your anxiety or if it's something else deeper that's going on. Most of the times it's our anxiety, right? But you have to trust your doctor at that point. When they say it's just your anxiety, nothing else is wrong with you. You have to have some level of trust for your doctor and understand, listen, it's just the anxiety. Nothing else is going on here. I'm fine, right? So when we know that, you know, we're fine because if you keep worrying and worrying despite what your doctor said that's like hypochondria which is another form of anxiety which i could relate to that unfortunately but i deal with it and we can deal with all of our types of anxieties that there are so when you get these negative thoughts they're gonna come you know they came about over time they didn't just start out of the blue it happened because you're constantly making the habit of worrying too much too much too excessively about things that you shouldn't even worry about about things that you can't control let's underline that guys worrying about things that we can't control there's only a certain amount of factors things that we can control in life right we can't control everything but we can do what's in our control and that's about it we can't control other people we really can't control certain events in life that will take place like it or not so if we understand that if we come to terms with the fact that it's okay, I can only do what I control, that, what I can control, that will help us in dealing with our anxiety. So one practical tip and trick, when you start getting a burst of negative thoughts, try to tell yourself, it's okay, I'm doing what's in my control and I'm doing a good job at it, at that, right? Super important to say, okay, well, can I really control this or not? Because if it's not in my control, there's no point in worrying about it, right? And remember to interrupt those intrusive thoughts, which, Quite often we have these worst case scenarios that play around in our head, which will never come true. Replace those worst case scenarios with either best case scenarios or with normal scenarios, right? 
So you might want to say, oh, worst case scenario, why, why would I want to replace that with the best case scenario? Like, but what if it's something horrible? But if you can't replace it with a best case scenario, replace it with a regular thing. For example, you know, if your daughter isn't answering her phone, don't automatically assume, oh my God, she died. Assume either the best case scenario, oh, she's so busy with homework, she put her phone on silent. Or a regular scenario, she's out with friends and didn't check her phone. Try to really change the circuiting of your brain, guys. I know it sounds kind of complicated, but it's really not that complicated. We know when we're feeling anxiety, right? We could understand that thought. Instead of letting it spiral further, kind of stop it, kind of, what's the word? Challenge it. Challenge it with a more pleasant thought because those things that you fear, there's a really good quote that explains this. 95% of the things that you worry about simply don't happen. So what's the point of worrying about these things and living in this fake reality where we're so believing these negative things that we, you know, don't live in a real reality anymore. There's no point. And honestly, if you if you have anxiety and you're listening to this, you know I'm talking to you. You understand what I'm what I'm talking about here with the fake reality thing. It's normal by the way to have doubts. Doubts are normal. Everyone has doubts, but not everybody has, you know, panic attacks, generalized anxiety, though a lot of us nowadays do. But it doesn't mean we can't get over it. It doesn't mean we can't find better ways to deal with it. And listen, there's also this key factor. When you have this anxiety, when you have these feelings, because this is an impromptu video, I apologize that it's a little bit all over the place. But when you have anxiety, a lot of times people with anxiety know this, your fear, feelings of fear are going to manifest into actual physical symptoms. You might get nauseous, sick to your stomach, feeling you're gonna faint. You might think that you know you're dying, going crazy like I mentioned. You might feel as though sick to your stomach, rapid heart, want to run out of the room type of situation. And you have to, at that point, understand. Don't let it spiral thinking that you're actually like dying from cancer. No, no, no. Say, okay, I just have anxiety. Okay? That's it. It's gonna be okay. It's been okay. I've had this before and it's been fine, right? So a lot of times in life, we have different types of anxiety. So we can go through social anxiety, we can go through fear of dying or our loved ones dying. We can go through so many different types of anxieties or fear of you know something bad happening, like a car accident, whatever. It's so many different types of anxieties that we can suffer from, even several at the same time. So I could definitely understand how difficult it could be, but whatever your source of anxiety is, try to understand that whatever you're afraid of isn't that serious. It's not as scary as you think, and so exposing yourself to it more and more and kind of being more casual about it with time will definitely help. It's like exposure therapy, you know? If you're afraid of driving, you know, drive. Unless maybe you have a reason not to, you know? <laughs> then don't drive, but you get what I'm saying. These things that we're afraid of sometimes, we just haven't come in contact with enough to understand that really there's nothing to be that scared of. And an example that I can use is when I was younger, um, my childhood boyfriend's grandma was older, we took care of her together, and she was kind of sick. Not too sick, she was a really strong woman, but and I was always so prematurely worried about her dying. Like, I even annoyed him about it. I was like, oh my God, like, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? And like, she's an elderly lady, it's gonna happen. You know, I was worried about something that's gonna happen either way eventually but in the end when it actually happened i was not as worried I, I didn't have such a crazy reaction that i thought i would have because i've never experienced death before i didn't know how it would feel i didn't know how it reacts but in, in the end when she died when my grandpa died when my other grandpa died you know instead of reacting like i thought i would react with this horrible fear and feeling I was just like, you know, that's really sad, it's unfortunate, but it happens, it's life, right? So sometimes our reaction to the thing before it actually happens is scarier than what it really will be. That's why it's no point to be scared, and I'm telling you guys this, seriously. I'm seriously telling you guys this, it's true, it's just no point to be scared. The things that we're afraid of, again, they're either things that we can, you know, they're gonna happen either way so we can't control them happening, or they're things that will likely never happen because 95% of what we're afraid of won't happen. So we can't allow, it's fine to have anxiety, fear, doubt, we all have it, but it's not okay to let it hold you back in your life, right? So despite it, try to be happy, live a good full life, go for your dreams, don't let it stop you is what I'm trying to say. And when you do get those bursts, those, those bursts of fearful thoughts or that fearful sensation in your body, try to remind yourself, this is just anxiety. I can only control what I can control. And 
replace those intrusive negative thoughts with positive thoughts and that's it that's the biggest tips and tricks the biggest takeaways that i want you guys to have here today and that's those are the keys just to understand what it is and what's going on with you it's a negative pattern that you created through your habits and it could definitely change once you replace those habits of taking that panic further by you know calming down a little bit and telling yourself what it really is tell yourself what it really is <laughs> anyway so if you tell yourself what it really is time and time again eventually you're not going to have those waves of negative thoughts they're going to come to you less they're not going to come to you every day now but every other day maybe you know or they're not going to come five times a day but two times a day at first so it kind of just like attacks you when you're vulnerable that fear you know and when you understand i'm not really scared anymore i'm not scared of anything anymore it's very helpful so one thing that really also helps um i had health anxiety because i had costochondritis which you guys can look that up it's like a weird inflammation of your ribs one thing that truly truly helps is to understand when you're having anxiety or when i have my costochondritis that helps for that too just to tell myself this is uncomfortable but it's not deadly and that's key and you have to believe it you can't think when, when i mean medical people have told you there's something wrong with you you can't keep thinking there's something wrong with me and anticipating this dreadful feeling which i know is a hallmark symptom of anxiety this dreadful anticipation of something bad happening whatever it may be it won't really happen so it's not real life right so just remember it's not gonna happen nothing's gonna happen to you you're perfectly safe and that's why it helps to also have a spiritual backing like to believe in god or whatever spiritual entity you believe in is so important so, so key to have a spiritual belief but also back to the things that i said we can't avoid so if you have if you suffer from really strong anxiety i highly recommend for you to try to limit your caffeine intake if you drink several cups a day limit it to one cup a day if you can cut it out and not drink it every day that's the best like me personally i'm quitting coffee too that's why i'm drinking mint tea with like three packets though but it's very low caffeine because it's mint tea it's actually like a sleepy tea so yeah try to limit your caffeine replace your daily coffee with tea because it still has some caffeine right and if you really want coffee maybe have it on a weekend or once in a while like a couple times a month with friends as opposed to every day several times a day it will help and same with like moving exercise if you don't have an opportunity to exercise like intensely at least take a walk do something get your body moving dance to some music around your house try to do something um and try to eat healthier guys try to eat less processed foods if you could try to avoid animal products go ahead or try to limit your exposure go ahead um, or eat high quality meats if you're eating meat um, these type of things they really matter because also when we eat something healthy we understand okay this is healthy this is good for us as opposed to when we're eating junk food and then we're like what am i putting inside me i know this is bad and then you just it's gonna make you more anxious if you're an already anxious person so it's better to just eat healthier trust me it's not something you could take a shortcut on the healthiness the limiting the caffeine and the exercise not something you can do a shortcut with those are the basic things for a reason when we also get anxious as i said with the breathing we tend to hyperventilate so one thing that will definitely help is if you don't breathe so much through your upper chest but through your diaphragm so if you could lay down at, during an anxiety attack i know sometimes we can't um try to put your hand on your stomach and as you breathe try to make it not your chest that rises but try to see like when you breathe in have your stomach expand and when you breathe out have your stomach contract so try to you know don't breathe in and out too fast that's hyperventilation try to count have a certain amount of counts in and out maybe you could try one two three four five six seven eight let's do eight in and out that's fine there's no specific way i don't want to say because i'm not a medical person or a psychologist but yes try to control the breathing too if you can but for me personally guys i know some people it helps for me personally when i try to control my breathing and i focus too much on it it can make my anxiety worse what truly helps and if you guys take one thing away from this video is just to tell myself this is uncomfortable but it's not dangerous it's just anxiety and i can only control what's in my control like i'm not god i can't control everything and that's what helps me that little mantra thing in my head really helps me so yes now i've explained to you guys listen anxiety it's not just something that we can really even diet and exercise if you still have that negative 
framework of worrying, it's not gonna help. It's the thing, it's very mental. So once we know, okay, it's just a habit that I've got myself into, I can break it if I just don't panic more and more every time it comes up and I just know what it is and I kind of just shoo it away, it's gonna go away, you know? It's kind of like, it's kind of like a toxic ex. That's what anxiety's like. It's like, once you once it keeps creeping back, you gotta just block it, change your name on Instagram, whatever you need to do, you know? And in the end, it's gonna be gone. Totally gonna be gone, and I promise you guys that. So, and if it's not totally gone, it's gonna be like so in the back of your mind that you don't worry about it anymore. Yeah, okay. A few more little things that helped me. So ASMR, you guys could look it up on YouTube. It is like these people who whisper things like, they tap things like. So basically what it is, it's like a reflex type of thing. I'm not sure exactly how to explain it. You guys could Google it. It makes you relax when you listen to it. And I highly recommend ASMR for anxiety. Highly recommend YouTubers like the anxiety guy. He's very good for anxiety. Um, I think he's specifically for hypochondria, but he's just good for anxiety in general as well. So those tips as well from YouTube, that, that helped me with anxiety for sure. Um, definitely mint tea helps. Definitely listen to ASMR before you go to sleep because I know you could get insomnia from anxiety. And try to have some little self-care routine if possible. Don't be so hard on yourself. Take it easy. Maybe do some yoga in your room. But really remember that even with all these little activities we do, we're kind of just doing that to not deal with the problem. The problem is just the behavior, right? That you've created and your reaction to the behavior and to the physical sensations in your body. But that can be broken. So... That's it guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was at least somewhat helpful to you and I hope that if it was helpful to you, you guys let me know, comment down below or like the video for support and I will definitely make more videos regarding anxiety. And probably we'll do one specifically about a certain type of anxiety. I don't know which one to do yet. I haven't had all of them, but I can relate to social anxiety because a lot of my friends had it. I've only had uh, health anxiety, fear of dying and just regular generalized anxiety and panic attacks. But I will definitely make another anxiety type of video for sure. And I will also make other type of videos too. It's not just going to be an anxiety channel. So thank you guys for watching. I love you all. Have a beautiful day and hope it was helpful. Mwah.